So maybe you've got a situation where you've restored your recovery seed into your wallet, but you're seeing a balance of zero. What are you going to do? I see situations like this all the time in these sort of recoveries and consultations that I do with people. And while sometimes it's to do with things like using a BIP39 passphrase, other times it's to do maybe with compatibility issues between the wallet they originally used when they set things up versus the one they're trying to use now, or maybe they've actually done something non-standard somewhere along the way by accident. So in this video, I'm just gonna run through some powerful functionality in Electrum that is useful in this exact situation. It's actually been part of Electrum for a couple of years now, but it does seem to me that it's not nearly as widely known about, appreciated, or understood uh, as it should be. And once I've run through that, I'll also just talk a little bit about wallet fingerprints and how they are a really powerful way to be able to make sure that you don't get your backups mixed up and you know that you are at least looking at the right wallet. So let's get into it. And if you haven't already done so, hit subscribe, that way you can stay in the loop for content I make to help you find your way in the crazy and often hostile environment that is cryptocurrency. So just to start with, let's say we had this seed here that we had had for a few years and we went to restore it onto an Elipal, but when we paired this with our app and had a look at the balance, we could see that there was only basically 68 cents there and hardly any transactions. And this is pretty much the point where people start to panic. Now, in this specific situation, this is due to Elipal not following standards very well. If you were to store this seed on something like a Jade, a Ledger, or a Trezor, it would show up just fine. But anyway, let's just run through how you would use Electrum on Tails to find some of the other Bitcoin accounts that we can't seem to see with the Elipal. This will involve importing your recovery seed into Electrum, which will make your recovery seed hot. So this is not a process you just want to do on your standard desktop environment. This is actually something you want to do in something like Tails Linux, which does come bundled with Electrum from or if you're someone who has an Android smartphone, you could use Electrum for Android on your phone as that will generally be a more secure environment than your standard uh, desktop. And you can also verify the APK for Electrum on your phone using the process that I cover in this video here. And just like I often say in my other recovery videos with BTC recovery and stuff, if this is a seed that you're using with a hardware wallet, my strong advice is that even if you're using these precautions and running Electrum in Tails, uh, you should still you know, reset that hardware device, generate a new seed, and then send the funds from this old wallet that you've recovered onto a fresh new seed on your hardware wallet that will stay offline. So you have been warned. So basically I booted up into Tails and I'll just say start Tails because the defaults are all fine. And we'll just go with the defaults and just use Tor automatically. Now, there are two ways that you can use Electrum with Tails. You can just use the Electrum that comes bundled with Tails, which is like, probably fine. Uh, or if you really want to be thorough, you can actually follow the process to verify the GPG signature of an Electrum app image and then run that in Tails Linux using the process that I cover in this video here. For the sake of simplicity in this video, I'll just be using Electrum bundled with Tails. So basically, we'll just click on Applications, go into Internet, and choose Electrum Bitcoin Wallet. It will warn us to say persistence is disabled for Electrum. That's fine. Okay, so basically on the Electrum screen, we'll just leave it as default wallet. That's fine. We'll say next. We'll say we have a standard wallet, and we'll say that I already have a seed. And we'll say next. Now, this is where we enter in the seed phrase that I had before. And given that this is Electrum, we also need to click on options and say that we have a BIP39 type of seed and say OK. And then we can see that it says the checksum is OK and we click next. Now, this is what I actually want to show you. So while we can manually choose the script type and derivation path in Electrum, there's also this feature here which says detect existing accounts. And if I click on that, basically what it will do is it will scan common paths. And this includes both standard and non-standard derivation paths and script types we might have used. So it's not only found both a legacy and compatibility SegWit account for account zero, but it's also found a second account, you know, account one, for compatibility SegWit, it's found a native SegWit account as well as a non-standard legacy account. And this kind of account configuration is actually very common if you were using something like Mycelium or Coinomi, because how a lot of these older wallets used to work is they would give you a legacy SegWit and native SegWit account and sort of stack those three accounts on top of each other. And the challenge with these kinds of wallets is that most modern wallet software will only use a single script type uh, for each account. It won't represent any funds that might have been spread across the different script types uh, in the way that you would expect. Meaning you'll actually have to create multiple accounts to be able to access all of the funds that were previously sort of rolled into a single account. 
So in this instance, this standard BIP49 compatibility SegWit account is the one that I was showing on the EliPal. And if I just say, okay, it'll automatically populate this for me. And if I say next, I won't worry about a password. And while we're waiting for that to sync, I'll actually just add all the other accounts that had these funds in them. So there we go, I've run through that process and found five different accounts all associated with that seed that all had funds. And this first one here is actually the only one that Elipal was showing me. It wasn't giving me any visibility of the others at all. And while it's important to say Blue Wallet does do something very similar to this when you import a seed into it, I still found that Electrum does a much better job, particularly of detecting seeds that people have set up and accounts that people have set up in non-standard ways. Doing something like using, say, a native SegWit script type on a legacy derivation path or something like that. This is also a really good spot just to show you something helpful about wallet fingerprints. And if I just go into wallet information for all of these accounts, and if I just arrange these wallet information windows, you'll see that despite the fact that each of these different wallets has a different derivation path and a different script type, they all have exactly the same BIP32 root fingerprint. And if we go over here and put that seed into Sparrow, we can see that what is called the BIP32 root fingerprint over here in Electrum is the master fingerprint here in Sparrow. So in terms of both record keeping and troubleshooting, if you keep track of your wallet fingerprint, you can be sure that you are looking at the correct account in terms of where you think your funds should be. And if you're doing something like troubleshooting, say a hardware wallet, uh, offline signer or something like that, if you know that the wallet fingerprint matches what you expect, you can at least uh, panic a bit less because you can be sure that you have the right seed that you should expect or the seed plus passphrase if you're using a passphrase. Uh, and you can know to focus instead on things like checking different derivation path, checking different account types, and focusing here rather than wondering whether you actually have the right seed in the first place. While you can manually go through checking all the different script types, account numbers, and derivation paths using a hardware wallet, and you know while some things like Ledger and Trezor do this very well, I still think it is very helpful to at least know about the tools that exist out there, particularly uh, this functionality in Electrum. You know, my hope is that you actually never need to use it uh, and that you keep good track of your notes, uh, recovery seeds, and things like that. Uh, but the simple reality is that everyone does make mistakes, particularly if you are storing funds for the long term. If you've had any experience with this kind of issue or are familiar with other tools that might be helpful, definitely leave a reply in the comments. Likewise, if you are actually having this problem yourself, uh, you know, definitely just leave a reply in the comments. I do my best to try and reply to all of them. But if you're totally, totally stuck and want one-on-one -on -one support, you can also request that through my website here. Other than that, stay safe. Thanks for watching, I hope that was helpful. Hit like if you think that other people would find this video useful and hit subscribe if you'd like to be kept in the loop about future content I make that helps people stay safe in the crypto space and to recover if they get into trouble. If you have any questions about this video or a topic that you'd like me to cover, just leave a reply.